My name is Laura Maria Gruber, and I'm here today to talk to you about Latino breastfeeding. Um, I've both been a Latino breastfeeding mom, and I work with them. I know our issues, and more importantly, I know how to solve them. Uh, my Latino life experience began in Vega Baja, Puerto Rico. Woo! Got Puerto Ricans in the house? Yay, okay. Um, see? Uh, although I grew up in Texas, I am and I will always be a Boricua de Pura Cepa, or rather wholeheartedly Puerto Rican. I was a toddler when we left Puerto Rico, but my mom did her best to keep our Latino identity alive, and in doing so, she made sure that we preserved our language, our culture, and most importantly, by dedicating her life to working in the inner cities of, Let of uh, San Antonio, she taught us that being Puerto Rican here meant to help all Latinos. Today I want to tell you the uh, two stories of two mothers who um, have taught me so much. I share their stories because I find worth in them and I feel like you'll find worth in them as we come together to change the Latino uh, breastfeeding big picture. The first story I'll share with you is about a Latina mother who I, met for, uh, who I first met my senior year in high school. Uh, despite her situacion, she had a really good head on her shoulders. I remember in class her talking to other pregnant teenage moms about how badly she wanted to birth naturally because that's what her mother had done. But with truthful humor, I also remember her saying that her first experience, her first positive experience with breastfeeding came from a National Geographic magazine, from photographs in them. I find it unbelievable that in her pregnancy and the time that her doctors, WIC, and her teen parenting class that nobody found her worthy of discussing breastfeeding with. And bless her heart, her mother did talk about breastfeeding. But she'd say that although she wanted to breastfeed, she had no support. And she would painfully dismiss her own breastfeeding experience as her just not having been a buena vaca, or in English, a good cow. And this young mom and I, we became better friends over time. And I learned even more about the experiences that influenced her worth. Her machista dad left when she was young and he didn't find worth in returning. And because he wasn't there to protect her when she was 15, she was assaulted. And probably as a consequence of her diminished self-worth, she, she gave in to her machista boyfriend who would later leave her and her baby. So her long birth story short, and I was there with about eight of her other high school friends at the delivery. Hours after getting that healthy vaginal delivery that she had prayed for, her baby was finally allowed to come to the breast. I remember that she did everything to try to latch her baby and nothing worked. She says that breastfeeding was in no way like the ladies in National Geographic made it seem. And I remember that somewhere in those first days, she began to question whether, like her mom, her breast also didn't work. She reached out to help, but none of the resources called her back. And then about a week after, I remember going to the doctor with her for a breast infection and her saying that that doctor's appointment was her last hope at fixing breastfeeding. But when the doctor walked in, he handed her a bag of formula. And he said, mijita, sometimes breastfeeding just doesn't work. Sometimes breastfeeding just isn't worth it. And that was this mother's breastfeeding end. For five days, this young mom expressed every last drop of her breast milk for her baby boy. But she would go on to spend years questioning her worth and whether she was enough for her baby. And now I'll tell you about the next mom. This one's older. This mom was fiercely determined to breastfeed. For her, there were no excuses, not even returning to her three jobs. She did everything she could in her pregnancy to learn about breastfeeding. And when her baby girl was born, she did everything she learned in class. She did, she roomed in, she did kangaroo care, she restricted visitors, but her baby still wouldn't latch. Now, she knew that she needed more support and she'd remembered in class that she could have her hospital's lactation consultant page, and she did, 
But because it was a busy weekend and the hospital was understaffed, the lactation, came in, the lactation consultant came in two days later. Now, she was friendly and apologetic, and she taught my friend how to pump to preserve her milk supply, but because she didn't have time, she asked her to call lactation centers and support groups for help. And so this mom did call them. Yet as the days went by and her days were unreturned, neither, pardon me, and the calls weren't unreturned neither by the lactation consultants or by the support groups, she lost hope. And at this point, like many Latinas, she prayed over her motherhood. And she begged God to help her with breastfeeding. She, nego she negotiated with him and she made him two promises. The first one, she swore that if God would just help her baby latch before she returned to work, that she would never unlatch her. And the second, she promised to become a lactation consultant so that she could help mothers like her. And still, despite begging and pleading and promises, for weeks nothing happened. She would try on her own, but to no avail. Many times through tears, I remember her telling me that maybe breastfeeding for her just wasn't worth it. Yet one fateful day, the very morning of the day that she had to go back to work, God answered, and her little girl miraculously latched for the first time. And for this mom, that first latch was the beginning of a lifetime of healing. And I know, see, both of those stories are mine. These stories of purpose and breastfeeding providence accompany me silently every day fueling my work. And today, at this incredible conference, I speak them, and I pray that they'll make a difference. These are my children. Carlos Alejandro, who's 20, and received five days' worth of my breast milk. And this is Alejandra Isabel, who's seven. And she weaned herself in her fifth year of life And because I keep my promises, I'm the board certified lactation consultant that I promised God I would become. But even years after making those promises, there's still so much left to do, and I need your help. When you think about the 80% of moms who start breastfeeding like me, can you make it easier for them to reach their goals? Can you remember that it was in a magazine where I first saw breastfeeding? So can we reach out to girls and young women in schools with programs that teach them that breasts are for babies? Because if we don't talk to our girls about their breast function and worth, we're leaving it to chance that some other less educational magazine will teach them that breast are for sex. And when you're creating parenting programs, can you remember the machista men in my life? Can we redefine machismo to mean to respect, to support, and to protect? Can we talk to our men to talk to our boys about the real reason for breast and about the worth of women? And my doctors, can we help more of them understand that breastfeeding problems are solved by fixing breastfeeding and not by replacing it? Can we teach them also to troubleshoot breastfeeding so that formula becomes their plan Z and not their plan B? And remember that Rush lactation consultant who helped me establish lactation but couldn't help me start breastfeeding? When I became her, I understood 
that lactation consultant to mother ratios are disproportionately high. We need to license breast, clinical breastfeeding support so that Medicaid and insurance companies don't have an excuse not to cover breastfeeding support for all moms. So if you work in policy and it matters to you that mothers get support early in establishing breastfeeding, please join the USLCA's efforts in increasing the worth of lactation consultant to mothers in the 49 states who still haven't licensed us. And lastly, can you remember my mom who spent 66 years thinking that she wasn't a good cow? Can we create programs and campaigns that can help her and her friends understand why they weren't supported in breastfeeding? Because if we tell them the truth, that their bodies did work and that they were enough, like my mom and like me, we'll forgive ourselves and we'll heal. And because we're Latinas who were raised to unify and to help, we will combine our worth and I promise that together we'll change the breastfeeding stories and the health of Latino generations. Thank you.